You started your career as an occupational therapist at Queensway General Hospital, which is now Trillium Health Partners. What was the vision that you initially had for yourself and your career when you started your journey as an occupational therapist? Thanks. Yes, it's a it's a good question, and uh, it's a question that um, many of my occupational therapy colleagues ask me. Back, you know, it was many years ago that I graduated. Uh, it was an undergrad program at the time, and I really had no vision other then to be a really great clinician. Um, you know, I was passionate about helping people. I loved the work and that was the, I, you know, I honestly didn't see much beyond that at the time. I think my view um, around leadership and advancement has evolved significantly. I mean, I think the one thing I can say, despite the, my focus on clinical, uh, clinical care at the time. I was always um, very interested in, in improving systems. So I moved into leadership very early on in my career. And I believe it was because I had always been looking at uh, the existing way things were operating in hospitals and healthcare and trying to shift those things to improve care for patients um, and streamline care. So I think that, uh, you know, that kind of has been there from the beginning. I started in a leadership role, you know, about a two, one or two years after um, I started practicing. Always had clinical activity, clinical work and leadership combined um, for many, many years, but um, that was my kind of entree point. Great. So very soon, very short uh, clinical journey and then jumping into management. What initially drew you to occupational therapy? I was always um, very interested in I guess, functional and practical ways of, of helping people. I, you know, I think I'd, you know, I'd looked at a number of health professions, but I had early jobs where I had been working with um, children with developmental disabilities, physical disabilities, et cetera. And uh, many of those children had occupational therapists. And uh, I really brought together my interest in science and um, art, really. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of combination of being very creative, which I like to think that I am. Uh, so it spoke to my creative, uh, my creative side and uh, my uh, love of science. Um, my initial First career choice was landscape architecture, and I, at the very late in the day, pulled the plug on that. But uh, my thinking was, as an occupational therapist, I was going to be in the in, in the space where I would design spaces, accessible spaces. That was kind of my initial thinking. Wow. But once I got into that pure, I guess, healthcare hospital mm -hmm. uh, work, I. I loved it. So, so that a jump into management was to actually create some change at the system level because you were seeing some things that needed to be changed. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. And how would you say your OT background has helped you in your leadership journey? Well, you know, I think um, for many health professionals, but an OT in particular, that, um, you know, that focus on on the person, um, I think the focus on um independence, the ability to have people direct their own um, sense of what's valuable to them has, has very much helped um, me lead teams. So it's not, um, it's not my um, definition of what's valuable, um, it's the individual's uh, definition. And so that's how you can harness the passion. I mean, we know as OTs that if the person doesn't have the goal of, you know, being independent to feed themselves, for example, then they're not going to achieve it. Um, so you can't, you know, you can't superimpose your your goals on someone else. And that that's the same as managing people. Um, so, you know, you do need to frame things to inspire people um, so that they are aligned. And I would say that uh, that's a that's a constant um, evolution as a leader. Yeah, very transferable skills, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And looking back at your career, Heather, would you have done anything differently? No, I'm not sure. You know, every every experience that I had was right for the time, uh, right for the time in my life, right for the experience that I had. I'm not sure I would necessarily do anything different. I mean, I did move about a fair amount, you know, from a perspective of different kinds of roles as a healthcare professional usually go down either the kind of clinical 
leadership side or you go down the academic leadership side. I went back and forth between those two. So I took on roles where I was uh, more of a professional practice lead, you know, that, that angle. And then I had um, many more roles actually where I was, you know, in clinical leadership. You know, I, I view it now that I have a, a good perspective on practice in the professions and a variety of um, research education. And so it helps me prepare to, to lead a academic health sciences um, center. Um, but, you know, it may have zigzagged me maybe a bit more than a, I wasn't a straight path. I was a bit of a, a zigzag, I would say. And, you know, as you were moving up in your career, how did you decide when it was time to move or take that next leap, uh, take that next job? Yeah, you know, it's always been about what's been inspiring and exciting. And, uh, you know, I love, I'm somebody who loves change, um, which, you know, I think sometimes not everybody, uh, not everyone on my team uh, appreciates that I, I do that all the time. But uh, so I do always like to be able to enact change. So, you know, having some goals, um, having a sense of where you want to get to, what's that place um, and knowing you know, moving to towards getting there. And once you get there, you know, knowing when you're there and, you know, is there or isn't there something else that needs to happen there or is it time to move on? It's been a bit uh, serendipitous as well, I would say, you know, just different times in my career where opportunities were available. I was ready to try something new. Sometimes the universe aligns and, uh, you know, that that's a piece of it too, um, as well intentional and unintentional at times right right mm -hmm. and are you a goal setter like you had goals for yourself for you know your short-term goals your long-term goals you planned your your career because i know you said when you first started as an ot you you just wanted to be an ot you weren't thinking about going into management and leadership at that time yeah, and I, I'm probably quite different from other leaders in this regard in, in that I really did not have um, the long-term goals. I, you know, I, I, I worked in areas that um, I felt I could make a difference, mm -hmm. that I was energized about, and then, you know, a different opportunity came along. Sometimes those were lateral moves, sometimes they were step-ups, but I, I, that's really how I did it. I'd say a bit later on, you know, then I, I became a little bit more intentional about things, but um, I've always had goals. I've had, I've used coaches um, quite a bit, which I'm a huge believer in that, that really uh, discipline of uh, helping you set goals um, and identify areas that you need to, to work um, on yourself. So I, I've definitely done that and that's been really helpful, but I was never really a long-term Five year out, I want to be a vice president, or I want to be a. I, you know, I was more interested in really um, being able to make a difference and be sure that I could find balance um, in my life. You know, at that at the time that um, these opportunities presented themselves. Mm -hmm. And you said you've used coaches, you believe in coaching, and that's a rare when it comes to healthcare, especially not a lot of us are aware of even coaching or the benefits that coaching brings. So how did you find coaching and uh, what was your journey like? Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was back when I knew I was kind of ready to make a bit of a shift, um, you know, and talking to a number of people in um, the field at different levels, um, higher levels than I was at. So, you know, a lot of people talked about the value of having a coach. Um, it had been offered to me um, and I'd, you know, I'd had the experience before, but I, you know, I don't know if I had totally um, capitalized on the experience of a coach earlier on, but a bit later, you know, more mid-career than I really saw the value when I was, um, I understood a little bit more what I was wanting to achieve. I had a better self-reflection on what were the areas that I thought I needed to work on and that I was definitely much more um, determined or intentional about that I wanted to advance um, with respect to making an impact in the system. So then uh, that, then that's when it really, um, I found it hugely valuable and I, I continue now to have a coach and she pushes me and uh, that's uh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are some goals you are working on, Heather? Your personal or your professional goals? So my professional goals are very much aligned with the hospital strategy. So it's um, really the 
you know, advancing the organization. So I have had a number, so I'm just about two years into the role. So we've had quite a bit of change on the executive team. So that's been a major focus and a lot of focus on alignment um, with the strategy and, you know, driving the organization forward towards the strategy. So most of my, a lot of my goals around that, there's um, a significant goal um, in our strategy um, around equity. I mean, the hospital has always stood for equity, um, certainly started for equity related to women, but we've really parlayed that into, you know, a much broader view of equity. And as you mentioned, some of our work in Indigenous health, we're quite doing quite a bit of work right now in anti-Black racism, we're quite involved in the trans community and a number of other groups that have been historically uh, extremely marginalized in the healthcare system. So um, one of my major personal goals aligns very much with that. So if I'm leading an organization to be equity seeking, I myself have to really reflect and understand my own biases, um, how I've contributed to, you know, systemic racism, for example. And uh, so I'm doing a lot of work on my own uh, definitions of um, equity and how I'm contributing um, or not um, to advancing or holding back the, the work of the organization. So that's probably probably one of my top goal, personal goals right now. I've done a number of training sessions and it, it, it continues. Um, and I have a lot of advisors that, um, that help me um, reflect on um, both what I'm saying and doing, what the organization is doing um, so that we start to break down some of the some of the barriers that exist.